Elon Musk, I'm shocked. SpaceX changed the design of Starship Super Heavy. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX, his private spaceflight company. Musk has repeatedly stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002 primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. SpaceX is now actively trying to turn this sci-fi dream into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. But in order to achieve this monumental task, the design of Starship and Super Heavy needs to be ideal, and Musk continues to make changes along the way to perfect it. Today, we're going to tell you about the design changes in SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy. Now, you may all be wondering about the same question as us. Weren't the Starship and Super Heavy ready? What other changes have been made to them? Will they make a massive difference in their performance and function? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve deeper into the design changes that will revolutionize the space industry forever. So, let's begin the video. Not long after Elon Musk confirmed plans to add three more Raptor engines to Starship and stretch the upper stage's propellant tanks, the SpaceX CEO has confirmed one of several smaller design changes planned in the interim. On January 3rd, Musk confirmed that SpaceX is entirely relocating one of two secondary header tanks that Starships use to store landing propellant. A graphic sketched on the side of future Starship rings further revealed plans to tweak most of the subsections that SpaceX stacks to form a Starship, complementing an upgraded nose cone design. Finally, another design change was spotted on hardware that will eventually become part of the first full-thrust Super Heavy booster. According to Musk, starting with Starship 24, which is likely the next ship SpaceX will complete, the methane fuel header tank will be relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone. From the start, Starship's oxygen header tank has been located at the very tip of the nose, placed in such an inconvenient location for the sole purpose of shifting Starship's center of gravity forward. Now, the methane header tank will join it in the nose, with the obvious explanation being needed to shift that center of gravity even further forward. It's possible that this change was planned before SpaceX realized the performance benefits of a stretched, nine-engine Starship, but it could also be a preemptive modification meant to counteract the added weight of three more Raptor engines and longer tanks. Musk's confirmation of the methane header tank's relocation came just a few days after a drawing on the side of a Starship section further confirmed several more minor design changes. Starbase hieroglyphics are not uncommon, as SpaceX engineers and technicians have often used hardware itself as a sort of whiteboard to sketch out plans and literally annotate ongoing work. This particular drawing was exceptionally detailed and useful, effectively showing exactly how Starship's design will change beginning on Ship 24. The changes are simple enough. In essence, SpaceX will be adding an extra ring to several Starship sections. For current ships, six distinct sections are stacked to form Starship's cylindrical tankage and hull. It takes another five stacked sections to complete the current nose cone design. Counting the nose as one, it takes about seven stack operations to fully assemble the basic structure of a Starship. With the design changes sketched out on a Starship S24 ring and an upgraded nose cone that'll debut on the same ship, fully assembling a nose cone will now take two or three stacks, and fully assembling a Starship will take six stacks. While obviously not a major redesign, the changes will significantly simplify and thus potentially speed up Starship assembly, which will have additional positive follow-on impacts on plumbing, wiring, and heat shield installation. There's a good reason to believe that some of the changes, especially expanding Starship's nose barrel from four to five rings tall, will end up being applied to Super Heavy, potentially reducing the number of booster sections needed from nine to seven or eight. However, there are already signs of some weirder changes being made to Super Heavy's design. On December 21st, a Super Heavy thrust dome, likely Booster 7's, was sleeved with several steel rings as part of a now routine process, partially completing the first 33 engine thrust section. However, instead of the usual aft barrel section comprised of three six foot tall steel rings, this sleeve was made up of four 1.4 meter tall rings, the first time in Starbase history that shorter rings have appeared on any hardware. Unlike all the other changes described above, 
it's entirely unclear what benefits SpaceX is getting from keeping a given ship or booster section the same height, while adding more smaller rings to it, a process that will inherently increase the complexity and amount of work required to complete that section. Regardless, it's clear that SpaceX is in the midst of a significant period of design revision that could see Ship 24 and Booster 7 debut with a wide range of upgrades and design changes in just a few months. So, are you guys enjoying the video? We've talked about the design upgrades, but what was the original design of the Starship in Super Heavy at the time of its inception? Watch on to get the answer, and while you think, do subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to receive instant notification about all our future videos. During that first presentation Musk gave on the Starship all the way back in 2016, he laid out the basic idea, a large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft in Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its own way from Earth's orbit to Mars or the Moon or any other desired destination. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. A separate rocket is needed just to get out of Earth's substantial gravity well. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on those worlds, using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. The ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked, Musk said back then. The rocket will contribute most of that height, measuring 254 feet tall to the ship's 162 feet. There will be some overlap of the two vehicles during stacking, which explains why the total height isn't 416 feet. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff, 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate, Musk said. And there won't just be one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people-packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years," Musk said. Earth and Mars align favorably for interplanetary missions just once every 26 months. Musk did not lay out plans for building the city. That'll happen organically as more and more people arrive on Mars, he said, comparing the ITS to the Transcontinental Railroad that helped open the American West to settlement from the East and Midwest in the 19th century. And these pioneers won't just be super rich if all goes according to plan. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people," Musk said. So, do you think SpaceX will get this engine developed with all these changes in time, or will we have to wait longer to get humans to Mars? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.